Welcome back, everyone, to the first team NFL draft and college football podcast. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share the podcast with your friends. We are just days away from the 2024 NFL draft officially kicking off. I hope everyone's enjoyed the process so far. We've been trying to give you guys as many great interviews, obviously a lot of great podcasts, ranking episodes, mock drafts. We've been trying to give you the full landscape of the 2024 NFL draft. And a part of that, like I said, some great interviews. I got Mr. Trevor Keegan with me today, who's an offensive lineman out of the University of Michigan. I should say national champion University of Michigan. Actually, Trevor, funny enough, man, you're the third Wolverine I've had on now. I had A.J. Barner, had Ladarius Henderson, of course, your, your uh, offensive lineman teammate as well. And uh, welcome to the show, man. And thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. So I I'm really excited to get into a little bit of your background, Trevor, because you are a player that I remember last year. You had the opportunity to potentially go into the NFL last year, right? Enter the draft and then obviously chase that dream. And it just, I guess my, my first question is, now that you saw what you guys were able to do your final year, win a national championship for the first time in a long time for the Wolverines and be a part of history, how thankful are you that you made that decision, man, to go back and give it one more year? Because obviously that year definitely paid off for you guys. Yeah, no doubt. It's it's truly an extraordinary feeling, um, especially just because I wasn't the only one you know, who wanted to come back. It was a group of guys who um, – you know, that loss to TCU, it, it didn't sit right with us. It didn't sit right with us leaving, you know, the University of Michigan because uh, we worked so hard to bring it back to where it needed to be in the first place. And, you know, we just want to take it to another step and win a national championship. So, you know, guys like Blake Corum, Zach Zinner, uh, Chris Jenkins, Mike Sanders still, Mike Barrett, uh, I'm probably missing guys, but um, we just all came back for one common goal and one mission to win a national championship. And, you know, every single day, it was Houston or bust. And we came in with our launch pail and went to work every single day. And uh, we had it up on our screen, uh, just reminding us, uh, you know, of our goals and where we wanted to be. And uh, we just worked so hard to accomplish it. And, you know, for it to come to fruition, it was a truly special feeling. Well, I wanted to ask because you just mentioned a little bit, you obviously were a part of a tremendous senior class. I mean, I, I think we can converge the seniors with the graduate students and just kind of in all one collective there because obviously you guys were a very veteran laden team this past year and i mean you're part of a draft class this year i mean i'm going to ask about the combine at some point right where it's like 18 players invited to the combine which is the nfl record like an all-time record how mm -hmm. special is that upperclassmen group i mean you just talked about it a little bit you guys as a collective or you know as individuals and then became a collective decided to come back and give it a chance like just historically speaking, looking back on it, how proud are you to be just a part of th that group with those guys and players that you had been bonding with for four or five plus years at that point? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, those guys are my best friends. Uh, we've been through hell and back together these past four or five years together. And, um, you know, just to see them succeed and, uh, you know, having a bunch of guys at the combine, um, you know, just – it shows, you know, how hard we work and, you know, at Michigan, you get developed and, you know, our big motto was, you know, team success brings individual success and yeah. there was no selfish players on our team. Um, and it was just guys doing their job, doing their role, doing their part. And, you know, when you do that and you know, your scheme, you know, the game plan, uh, you trust a brother to your right and to your left. It makes everything so much easier, and you can play so much faster. Um, and that's just a credit to our coach staff for getting us prepared each and every week, and you know, even to the guys too for you know taking the extra step, taking care of their bodies, and you know, watching the extra film, putting the extra work in the weight room. So, you know, I'm just proud of all the guys, and um, you know, it's definitely a cool feeling that you know all my friends and you know teammates were able to break a record of the combine this year. I wanted to ask about the brotherhood that you have on the offensive line because there are several offensive linemen, obviously, a part of the 2024 class with you. But I was just looking at, obviously, some of your accomplishments over the last couple of years. And, I mean, you're an all-Big Ten selection each of the last three years at, at varying you know levels, including first team this past year. You're a team captain this past year. And you're a part of a Michigan tradition that, like, Sharon Moore has obviously done an incredible job with that offensive line the last couple of years. But even before that, I mean, we could talk about the – John Runyon's and the Jake Long's and the Steve Hutchinson's, like a lot of great offensive linemen that has historically obviously come out of Michigan. What's it like to be a part of 
that lineage. You know, when you think of offensive line developers, obviously Michigan is right at the top of the list. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it's a very cool, cool thing. It's almost like a fraternity because, um, you know, all those those great offensive linemen that have come through Michigan, they come back, they talk to us. Uh, you know, I see Steve Hodgson every game week, Taylor Lewan, you know, once every other month. Um, you know, I was able to play with John Runny and Ben Bredesen, Cesar Ruiz, uh, yep. Michael Wainu. So, you know, they had a blueprint that we were able to follow when we were freshmen. So, uh, just making them proud. Um, you know, they were the ones who, you know, started the history of you know, Michigan offense alignment and, you know, things like that. And it was just up to us to, you know, continue that, but take it to a next step. Um, you know, our room the past three years isn't loaded with first rounders or second rounders. It's just a bunch of gritty guys who, you know, love to play football and, you know, genuinely love each other uh, and our, you know, our brotherhood. Uh, it's so strong and, you know, it's definitely a credit to Coach Moore and how he prepares us, but, yep. you know, it's a credit to the guys in the room who, you know, put in the dirty work, watch the extra film. Um, and, you know, when your offensive line is working as one, working in unison, uh, and you all know, you know, the scheme, where the pressure is coming from, where the blitz is coming from, uh, it makes it a lot easier for everybody. Well, and I want to ask about Coach Moore because, obviously, I know a lot of Michigan fans are very – they're very anxious to see what a coach more led team as him as the full-time head coach. Cause obviously we saw him a little bit in the capacity last year when coach Harbaugh was dealing with his suspension, but how excited are you one for coach Moore getting this opportunity and what should Michigan fans and maybe just national college football fans, what should they expect from university of Michigan under coach Moore moving forward? Yeah. Um, there's a guy coming into work every day and wants to be great. Um, that's just who he is. Uh, and I've been able to, you know, be by his side. I, you know, when I came in here as a tight ends coach, and I've seen him be able to level his way up, offensive line coach, co-OC, OC, now head coach. So uh, it's pretty cool to be on this journey with him. Um, and just that hunger and passion and the love he has for his players. Um, you know, he's going to get on you. He's going to coach you up hard, but he's going to love you even harder. So, um, you know, he said that before, and, you know, I think that's what people know about him. But just how genuine is. Um, you know, there's coaches that, uh, you know, come to college football, um, you know, for themselves, for their own career. For But, you know, relationships is what makes this game fun. And he's really good at that and having trust in his players and players trust him. So uh, it's just going to make guys want to play even harder for him. And he's going to keep Michigan, you know, where it needs to be. So obviously great coaching, lineage of Michigan football, and then also you're in the Big Ten, so you're playing against a lot of great defensive linemen on a week-to-week -week perspective as well. How prepared do you feel for this next step based upon where you've been, who you've gone against? How prepared do you feel for the next level right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super prepared. Um, you know, there's definitely you know more talent in the NFL when it comes to interior pass rush. Um, that's something that, you know, kind of lacks in college football is – an interior pass rush. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've gone against everybody. Um, you know, the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Ohio States, the Penn States. Um, and, you know, I mean, they're very talented dudes, but at the next level, um, you know, they're even more talented. There's freaks everywhere. So uh, yeah. just being able to prepare and, uh, for those type of type of special players who can, you know, pass rush and, you know, set the tone of the run game as well. So, you know, I, credit to me, I feel like, you know, I rise up to my competition. Uh, I feel like one of the lights are, you know, shining brighter is when I play my best. So you have gotten to to experience a full process now, right? You know, the All-Star Game circuit, obviously, up in Indianapolis for the Combine, the Pro Day. What's been, like, one of the most maybe enjoyable parts of this process for you? Like, if it's an individual event, uh, event or it's just the daily grind of the training that you've been doing at whatever facility you've been training at, like, what's been, I guess, the most rewarding aspect of this process for you or one of the most exciting ones? Yeah, I mean, every experience has been, you know, it's been a dream come true. Uh, I've been dreaming of this moment since, you know, I picked up football, so I'm going to take advantage of it and enjoy every minute of it. But, sure. you know, I think the process that I love the most was, um, you know, obviously after the winning national championship game, I left like a day after to start training. So I didn't get to, you know, talk with the guys and enjoy it with them. So I think when I came back like two weeks after the combine and everybody was here, we're all training together and, you know, just talking what we did. Um, I feel like that was like the coolest part because, you know, we didn't see each other for uh, two, three months and then just be able to rekindle those relationships and 
uh, you know, talk about what we did. You know, it still doesn't feel real. It's it's still a surreal feeling. And, you know, we look at each other we're like, man, we really did that. So, uh, like I said, just, you know, hang out with the guys and, you know, be able to do the, the do dirty work in the weight room, keep training and, you know, working hard with each other. And, you know, we still got a group here in Ann Arbor who trains you know, every day and a group of like eight to ten of us. So uh, we've been enjoying that. So I, I think it's super cliche sometimes, but I think it's true in your sense, right? When you're going against the first team every day in practice the past couple of years, when you're talk, going against guys like Chris Jenkins and Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant and all the great interior players that you've gone against when you guys are doing ones versus ones, how beneficial has that been to play against those types of guys? And overall, how special is that group? Because I'm already looking forward to the uh, 2025 NFL draft talk with Mason Graham and, and uh, Kenneth Grant, man. It seems like you guys got some really special players inside defensively. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there's there's special players. Um, we knew that from the day they walked in. Um, just I, I believe Coach Harbaugh said it a gift from the gods. Um, you know, not super highly touted recruits, but you know, came in and got developed, and you know, love love football and they love learning uh, and they love getting better each and every day. Um, you know, Mason and KG, they're they're two special players, and um, you know, go up against them every day and made me better. Um, you know, same with Chris Jenkins. You know, over my time in Michigan, I've been able to go against, you know, some really good, talented players like Aiden Hutchinson, Quiddy Pay, Josh Utze, um, Mozzie Smith, Chris Hinton, um, you know, guys like that. So that's what we practice against every single day. So it, it definitely makes the games easier. So I talked about a couple of the guys, and you mentioned Taylor Luan, who I forgot about, right? So when I think of Michigan, number 77 pops into my head pretty quickly in the offensive line. You know, I mentioned Jake Long. You mentioned – Taylor Luan, like there's been his, some historical great offensive linemen that were 77. But when I think about you, Trevor, and you're such an easy person to find on film because obviously you played, you know, left guard your entirety of your career, you know, as far as 37 career starts. But also you got the collar, right? You got the eye black. You got the 77. Man. Talk, talk to me about yourself as a football player because the things I love is you mentioned already, you get after it, man. Like I, there, there's something about an offensive lineman who from start of the play to the end of the whistle and to the echo of the whistle gives it everything they have. Talk to me about your play style and what you feel like you bring to the field. Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm a tone setter. Uh, I set the tone of the game. Um, and, you know, I play with heart. Uh, I love this game, um, and I'm going to give it my everything. Um, and, you know, when I have a genuine relationship with the guy to the right and the left of me and, you know, there's a genuine love for each other in the room, you know, that makes that even easier. Um, but I feel like, you know, what sets me apart is, you know, my football IQ. Um, just because I love studying football, I love watching film. Uh, I consider myself a film junkie and, you know, just be able to find, you know, the niche on the opponent, trying to find any read, you know, in a stance or, you know, a safety rotation or if a safety's topped over a nickel or, you know, if we're in a three by one and if we're in a three by one, then the mic comes instead of the nickel. So, you know, just trying to, you know, just learn the game and see it before the play even starts. Because, you know, I feel like anything pre-play is most is maybe more important than during the play. Because if you know what's coming, it's just going to make your job even easier. Sure. Um, but I feel like, you know, you're getting a player who, you know, gives us all and genuinely loves this game. Uh, I feel like I'm still very raw and pass pro. And, you know, I could easily get better at that just because the way I work and want to get better. And, you know, I, I really want to be great. And I feel like I got the right tools and the – in my toolbox and you know i'm really locked in between the ears so uh this is what i want to do this is who i am so um but yeah just a genuine love for the game you know definitely a tone setter so obviously you're talking about a lot of the the pre-game film study being able to understand what your opponents do and you know the tendencies that they have as a player and tendencies the defenses has are there also any maybe it could be in the past or current players in the NFL right now that you try to study a little bit to try to take from their game? Like, are there some guys that are kind of, I don't, I don't know if I want to say role models, but guys that you try to take things from their game as well. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I've been able to watch, you know, a bunch of NFL film the last three months. Um, you know, guys like Quentin Nelson, just his balance and his base and how powerful he is. Um, yep. Lindstrom with the Falcons, just, you know, how tenacity, the tenacity he plays with and how he gets off the ball. Um, I love watching Trey Smith, uh, Wyatt Teller, um, and obviously, you know, Zach Martin. You know, those are, those are the guys that I like to watch. 
I love it. A lot of a lot of different body types and play styles there too, which is really great. Kind of having a diverse toolbox to your point, right? So let me ask as far as the anxiousness now of the next few days. Obviously, you've been doing the the whole circuit. I'm sure you've been on some 30 visits at this point. Obviously, I'm sure you've been having some Zoom calls and doing all those types of things with teams. How just anxious are you for this next few days now, man? Because we are just a week from recording right now till a dream potentially becoming a reality. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I think it's just coming into this process, like I said, just being locked in, and, you know, being level-headed. Um, you know, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be very anxious sitting there, you know, waiting for my name to be called. But, um, you know, and the only thing that I'm anxious about is like, man, I don't know how I'm going to be living the next four or five years. And like, right. there's little things like that, but, you know, just keeping that out of my head and just staying locked in. It's, it's, uh, you know, and taking that perspective that, man, I'm going to live out my dream and accomplish everything I've been working for. So, uh, but, you know, on the back of my head, I still know that there's work to do. And uh, I just want to, you know, prove it to the team and the fans that, you know, I want to win uh, at the end of the day, that's I'm a winner. And uh, that's who I am as a person. So I guess my last question for you is just kind of a little bit more of a fun one. Where, where is, Draft days, I guess. I shouldn't just say draft day because it's multiple days, obviously. But next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, where are you going to be hanging out? You have a party plan, family? Like, what's the plans for draft day? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, with my family uh, back home in Chicago. I didn't really, you know, want it to be too big because I might get a little too anxious and I'm get all nervous and then I might get a little crabby. But uh, yeah. just keeping it small and keeping, you know, tight knit, you know, the people who, you know, I grew up in my household and, you know, my girlfriend and some of my other buddies. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be an awesome experience. And I'm, I'm just truly excited and, you know, thankful to be in this position in the first place. And, and I know you said earlier in the interview that this has obviously been a dream for you for a long time. But I'm just curious of that moment that you get to spend with your family, with your girlfriend, people that have obviously been there with you through all these games, you know, all the blood, sweat, tears, the, the you know, the 5 a.m. wake ups to go to to go to lift and all these types of things, man. How special is it to be able to share that with them? The people that have been your support system, obviously, throughout this entire process. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, my su support system is, uh, you know, guided me and, you know, showed me this process and helped me through the hard times and, you know, keep keep lifting me up and, you know, the good times. And I've always been there by my side. Um, you know, my parents made it to every single game, my college career. My sister's been there for me, you know, ever since I was a kid, you know, being a highly taught recruit and, you know, the spotlight wasn't always on her. Um, and it was on me, you know, a majority of the time. And, you know, she's continued to stay with me. She didn't get jealous. And, um, you know, I'm just super excited to spend the day with my family and, you know, the people who have been there for me ever since my, you know, my journey started. Love it. Okay, there you have it. Trevor Keegan, star offensive lineman out of Michigan the 2024 NFL draft prospect joining the show today. Trevor, I really appreciate it again so much, man. Only a few days into the big day. Wishing you the best of luck. And thank you, though, for giving us the time today, man. It's very appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.